gentlemen, this is Paul Isley with another episode of Ask Mr. Talanzia. We have six questions today, they're all good. Question number one, how do you deal with pests on air plants? Well, you can take a Q-tip with alcohol or Windex and sort of touch the insects with that, that'll get them. Or you can use any recommended pesticide, that'll, that'll work as well. You can use your fingers or, or anything and just kill the uh, kill a pest when you see them. So that's, uh, you know, you just have to go after them. If you, if you get rid of the ants, if there's no ants, you generally won't have pests. The pests that Talanzias get are scale and mealybugs generally. And if you get scale and mealybugs, then you've got ants because they bring them in. Those two insects will um, suck the juice out of the plant and they excrete and that's what the ants take as their honey back to the hive and so that's how that works. So if you use something, like I said before, uh, you should be able to get rid of them. Now question number two is any tips for caring for the plants when the temperatures get really low? Uh, generally care for them the same way. Uh, if it gets down towards freezing, you can bring them in the house for weeks at a time, not a problem. But just generally treat them the same way. Maybe not keep them real wet when it gets very cold. There are some that are more sensitive to cold. And when they're wet, that's, they, they will rot more easily. Dianantha, xerographic are examples of that. Uh, also, maybe not have water sitting inside the plant. Maybe dump the water out. But otherwise, just treat them like you normally do. Question number three talks about thinner leaf telangias and if there's any different care for them. And thinner leaf telangias grow in nature in areas that get a lot more air movement. That's why they have thin leaves. So, but as far as care goes, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. They do have less leaf mass than more thick succulent leaf uh, telangias. So when you have a thinner leaf or a very small telangia, then um, maybe you want to water it a little bit more frequently when it's hot and or dry. Uh, is it okay, question number four, to clump the plants or gather the plants closely together? And the answer is yes, you can, as long as they can dry out, as long as all the leaves, the base of the plant can dry out between waterings relatively quickly, then you can put them as close together as you want. With more air, you can put them more closely together. The next one is, um, Does high wind have an effect on the shape of the plants? And I haven't seen that. I haven't really ever looked for that. I haven't noticed that. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen. But uh, generally, I don't see air as being able to change the, the general shape of the plant like it would for a tree on a coast where the incoming breeze will cause it to lean inland, you know, with the breeze. So I don't I haven't seen that. And the last question was that it, uh, the person saw that Tillandsia recurvifolia variety sub secundifolia was recently reclassified as Tillandsia sub secundifolia and therefore would that change the name of the plant Tillandsia ed Doherty, which is a hybrid of Aranthos and what we call Leonamiana, which other people call sub secundifolia, recurvifolia sub secundifolia, would it change that second name? And the answer is yes. We call it Aranthus by Leonamiana because that's what we choose to call that plant because we believe more that's what it is. But if you choose to go with the recurvifolia variety subsequentifolia and then it becomes reclassified, then you would have Tillandsia Aranthus by Tillandsia subsequentifolia. By the way, subsequentifolia sub is a Latin prefix that means uh, almost. So if you have something that's planted submesic, that means it's almost wet growing, or sub zeric means it's almost dry growing. So if you have sub secum, and secum means the leaves growing in the same direction, they grow, they curve in the same direction, rather than growing in all directions. So if it's sub secum, that means pretty much the leaves growing, almost growing in one direction. And folia is from the Greek and then from Latin, and it means leaf. So you have almost, the leaves almost growing in one direction. Soup's cool to folio. So there you go. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you next time.